Hello everyone, this is Suja. Thank you so much for joining me today. And today, my crypto cowboys and girls, we're gonna look at uh, my opinions on Bitcoin and where it might be headed, where it might not be headed, um, and all the other analyses that I'm gonna do. Analyses, analyses, analyses. <laughs> Man, I have such a good way with words. Anyway, so um, first of all, none of this is financial advice, not a financial advisor, just my opinion, my analysis. You know, if you trade based on this, it's all on you. <laughs> I'm not saying you should do anything. You shouldn't do anything. I'm simply making this for my own records and to share my own thoughts and hopefully, you know, help myself grow and develop and become better at trading. All right, so Bitcoin, we have the candlestick chart by the looks of things. Um, Bitcoin is below the 21 day moving average. There has been a cross and um, on the stochastics, the stochastics have gone down. Okay, anytime it goes below 43, 42.73, that's when there's a chance of it going further down. So if you look at it this way, it usually goes way down and then comes back up. You know, anytime it's above 43, it seems to be okay. Or sorry, 42.73. So there's a chance that, you know, you're gonna have another two pullbacks here. And why do I say two? So if we look at our line break chart, right, this thing, broke one, two, three bottoms, right? Three lower lows, and then it's about to break, it needs to break this one, one, two, and then this one, three. So I think it'll just break within the next two candles, right? So I'm putting my sort of foot down at 50,562, where um, if, if it breaks at that point, I think it's gonna bounce back up. Um, and oh look, there's a <laughs> there's a cross here too on the price break chart. So usually when I look at these line break charts, I go, okay, well if there's a big you know break of three prior uh, bottoms, then I expect at least one to two of these little bl um, blocks. This was the perfect situation here, like three bottoms, one two, and they went back up. Right here, it, it gave you one bottom. And then here also one, two, three. So usually it follows a rule of three. That's what I follow. I'm like, okay, if there's one, there are bound to be two more. It doesn't always work that way. Sometimes it might actually go back up. I think we had one case somewhere. It's like, you know, one and then it went back up. But um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to break roughly at 50,558, right? Or 500, yeah, 562, somewhere around that area. Um, let's see what the Renko is saying. So Renko is pretty easy for me to read. Renko is, you know, if I see these hammer patterns, I know there's gonna be at least three until com completion, right? So, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oddly enough, there were two hammers. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Interesting. Um, sometimes in the overall, say, bull market, you don't have the Renko uh, reverse hammer play out. And that's fine. <laughs> but if it's in a bear market, you might actually have one play, given all the data that we have right now. So, you know, here it kind of broke. I had at least one hammer, so I knew it was gonna go higher. I'm guaranteed at least one of these bad boys right here, these uh, green bricks, as I like to call them. Um, I need to see what this does. If it ends up being a red block, it might end up being one of like this, a uh, reverse hammer, but it's we might actually get a green hammer and go back up, or we might actually just get a green block and still go back up. I'm expecting an upward movement because I don't see any reason not to. I'm not seeing any signals that are saying, nope, it's not gonna happen. Um, and you're probably wondering about the uh, 44463.96 area. So let's go do that. Um, whenever I think about systemic breakdowns and it's like, okay, at what point do I say, okay, market is in a downward fall and I need to, you know, skedaddle or short it. Um, I use the, what's it called? Yeah, Kage chart, right? So with the Kage, it's very interesting because if the market is below or the price is below the, this is called, I think the waist, these are shoulders and these are waist. If it's below the waist, that's a red sign where it's like, okay, you need to get the hell out. So you know, if Bitcoin falls anything below 44,399, let's just say 45,000, I'm gonna panic and probably leave. 
<laughs> and then come back at a lower price point. Um, so that's that. Uh, so that's why we have that. So I think it'll, sorry, hold on a second. I think it might range here, you know, between 44 and 50,000 before it goes back up or not. You know, it may not do that. But, you know, given the fact that we're, we seem to be closing, excuse me, below the 21 day moving average, not a good sign. I'm expecting two more days of say a bloodbath, or at least it's gonna go down wick wise. All right, so we've done Bitcoin. Let's go to Ethereum. Yeah, don't worry about saving things because who needs to save anything? So Ethereum, um, Ethereum's momentum looks like it's going down. Again, I wouldn't worry until I, I hit 1385. If bit or sorry, Ethereum prices break below 1385, uh, yeah, time to skedaddle or short the market. Um, <laughs> whichever one you're comfortable with. Um, let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. I wonder if the seventh pattern is going to be a red block. It, it might be. I'm not too sure because this is just one hammer. You know, back at the Bitcoin chart, we only we saw two hammers, each hammer, say, giving, you know, three upward blocks. Here it's only one. So I wonder, I wonder if this is going to turn red. I'm not sure yet. Um, okay. Let's see. Price break. There we go. So with price break, it did one, two, three. So I'm, I'm expecting the next couple of ones to break, you know, 1655 and then it'll, it, probably going to go down right here at 1447 and then I hope it comes back up. I would presume it would come back up mainly because I don't, again, I'm not seeing why it should have a systemic breakdown. The only time it has a systemic breakdown is if it's below 1385. So if it, if it comes down here at, you know, 1455 and it goes back up. Okay, cool. You know, perfect. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. But the minute it breaks 1385 is when I'm going to worry, right? Then I'm going to look at the uh, the green line, which is my, I think it's my 30 day moving average EMA. Yeah. Yeah. It's my, it's my 55 day EMA exponential. So yeah, that's that. And then we go back to the candles. Obviously it's below the yellow 21 day moving average. Not a good sign. Again, one of the things that I'm really glad about is that, you know, it looks like the stochastics are saying, okay, it's probably not going to spend too much time down here and probably bounce back. But I am expecting at least somewhere within the 1400 range to hit at some point, wick wise. May not be a closing point. Maybe a closing point. We don't know yet. We'll see. But again, don't worry about it unless 1385 is broken. And then I need to see my last chart of the day. <laughs> the last chart of the day, my friends, is Dogecoin. Why Dogecoin? Because it's pure trading. Because it's such wow. It's such fun. <laughs> Applying pure technical analysis to a pure meme cryptocurrency is like the best combination. Anybody who tells you otherwise is lying. Okay. So, all right. Look, it has broken this line. It has a downward momentum. Uh, it has the ability to come back down to roughly 0. 0.044, yeah, 446, yeah, there we go. So it can come here and probably bounce back up. Let's see the Renko. With the Renko, I'm, again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it, it's probably gonna come back down, break, come here, and then go back up. So as long as the 0. 0.4446 isn't broken, um, body wise, wick wise is fine, but body wise, we should be rebounding. So if you're actually going to trade Doge coins, you should probably get in now. <laughs> Again, not financial advice. I'm just kidding. You do you. I'm just giving my opinion. If I, here's, I'm going to word it. Okay. If I'm going to trade Doge coin, I'm going to wait a little bit longer before I got, jump back in. All right. So, uh, holy. Okay. <laughs> Look at the price break on this baby. <laughs> <laughs> slaps the roof of the of, of the crypto <laughs> Jesus it just it just goes down like a rocket ship so it breaks one two three all at once <laughs> Jesus Christ oh my god you know 
yeah, if it does, you know, it could probably come a little more down right here to like uh, 0.461 and then probably go back up. And then lastly, we're looking at candles. Candles make the handles. Wait, that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't have to. This is my show. I can say whatever I want. <laughs> All right, so yeah. It's gonna, again, the range is gonna be around this area. So at least this area is my ranging point. Again, if it breaks the 446 area, you know, let it go down. All right, so I'm gonna finish back up with Bitcoin. I wanna just check something real quick before I end this video. Uh, I wanna see the Bitcoin logarithmic growth chart. Usually every time I put it on, it's always on dark mode. And I'm gonna put it on light mode because you know, something about light and darkness. Anyways, <laughs> all right, forget the, all right. Children's your bands are not needed and so are, okay. So it's between 55, okay. So the next thing that we need to break is 65,000. I'm gonna put some lines here um, just to see where we're at later in the, in the game. So here, here, I think it's control H. Come on, trading view. Don't let me down now. What? Hold on a second. <laughs> Hold on. All right, there we go. We're having some technical issues. Okay. All right, so 65, 77, 86. So these are the next sort of breaking areas. And then the bottom out area is roughly 50,600 and 62. So wouldn't you look at that, you know? Look at where the last Fibonacci is. This Fibonacci line is almost there. So, it, you know, again, I think it'll come back down, test it, go back the hell up. So <laughs> it'll be fun. Uh, all right, so that's that. If it breaks this line, I'm gonna be so happy because it's gonna end up at 105. Jesus Christ, if it ever touches 105, I'm gonna party. I'm just gonna party, my friends. Party like a rock star. <laughs> party like a crypto rock star, a Bitcoin rock star. Cause this looks amazing, look at that. So that's where we're at right now. I'm just gonna save this chart, come back to it tomorrow, and then we'll reanalyze the situation, the sitch. Okay, so that does my video. Again, none of this is financial advice. This is what I think is gonna happen. You know, if I was a smart man, I would be betting on myself and I would be making moves based on my own analysis. Uh, but I told you all, <laughs> I'm not that smart. So, um, Cheers to me and my future self for at least the analysis part. But analysis is just one part. Being a trader is a whole other thing where you have to actually put the money behind your words. So hopefully as crypto goes down, I'll probably buy it. I'll probably buy Bitcoin roughly at the, you know, what mark am I looking at? Yeah, at the 50,000 mark. And then from that point on, I'm huddling till it's hot. Okay, all right. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.